Good morning, one and all. Today's topic, uh, in continuation to the yesterday's topic, locomotion and movement, level one questions. So in this yesterday, we have completed up to uh, we have completed up to forty eighth question. Today we will start with the forty one question, and in this, the question first. In a in a striated muscle, release of calcium plus ions into the sarcoplasm depends upon a development of action potential in the sarcoplasm, a flux of Na plus from the sarcoplasm, and influx of calcium plus into the axoplasm, or release of acetylcholine by motor neuron. So when you see onto this question, striated muscle means already you know that skeletal muscle, and release of, of Uh, calcium plus ions into the sarcoplasm depends upon so calcium ions influx or efflux of calcium ions will initiate the muscle contraction and muscle relaxation so from the given options four options if you see development of action potential in the sarcolemma efflux of na plus from the sarcoplasm influx of ca plus releasing of acetylcholine by motor neuron so generally uh, when an action potential is generated in a muscle fiber gener it produces the release of calcium plus ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum occurs then calcium bind to the subunit of tropomycin c that is tropionin c on the actin filaments and generally activates it activated actin binds uh, to the myosin head and forms a cross bridge you know that cross bridge formation this bridge pull the actin filaments this bridge pulls the actin filaments causing them to slide over the filament and thereby the contraction so in a striated muscle release of calcium ions into the sarcoplasm will be relating to the uh, generation of action potential in the sarcoplasm so your option a is the right answer next coming on to the next 41 question so here you are seeing the diagrammatic representation of diagrammatic representation of the sliding filament theory diagrammatic representation of the sliding filament theory in this they are asking what is the series of actions that are going to take place uh, in the sliding filament theory first uh, from what it should happen like uh, you can see that uh, <clears throat> the base of the is bridge attachment of cross bridge movement of myosin uh, during the contraction and releasing of cross bridge so this is the phenomenon that has to occur or take place in the case of uh, the <coughs> muscle uh, sliding filament theory during the muscle contraction so we can go with the answer uh, the phenomenal change that is taking place is obviously it is shown that d is followed by b b is followed by a a is followed by c so you can write anything but the correct format of understanding of this question is b so d is followed by b b is followed by a a is followed by c so next next anatomical unit of muscle is already you know that anatomical unit means structural and functional unit is sarcomere but anatomical unit of muscle is obviously the sarcomere uh, sarcomere is the functional and structural unit which forms the muscle fiber so here muscle fiber is the anatomical unit of muscle muscle anatomical unit answer is d answer is d here here you think that 
for a and band b so in this you need to find out uh, only the a and b band and correct the select the incorrect ones so in this incorrect ones you need to find out i it is formed of myosin and actin filament it is formed of only actin filaments it gives light appearance it gives dark appearance uh, in the central zone it has dark chrys member or z line dark chrys member membrane or member or z line it uh, the say in the central zone it has light line or h zone it is anisotropic it is isotropic so when you see onto these options when you try to find out the options it is formed of myosin and actin filaments so it is right uh, the, and generally when you see onto the i band more of the actin filaments is present this is also right it gives light appearance because of the uh, actin and myofilament it gives anisotropic or dark appearance so it is wrong and it gives because of only iso uh, a actin bands it gives light appearance so it is wrong next in the central zone in the dark chrys membrane or z line in the center zone it has dark chrys membrane or z line present in the i membrane half of the i membrane so it is wrong in the central zone it has a light hansen zone so this is comes to this this is these are right but here they are wrong and now coming on to the next one it is anisotropic already you know that it is anisotropic a bands itself says that because of the arrangement it is anisotropic and it is isotropic so here option 2 option 2 these two are wrong these two are wrong so you need to select 2 and 3 and c option is showing this incorrect statement so c option is the right option next i band is i band is bisected by i is bisected by already you know uh, between the two z lines the sarcomere is present sarcomere is in the middle of the i band so answer for this question is z line <coughs> is bisected by uh, i band is bisected by z line next next white white fibers differ from the uh, red fiber in having a number high number of mitochondria high amount of my, myoglobin high amount quantity of atp high quantity of sarcoplasmic reticulum so when you see on to this white fibers differ from the red fibers in having the high quantity of a uh, high quantity of the sarcoplasmic reticulum so mitochondria is also taken into consideration but the the muscle fiber depends on the sarcoplasmic reticulum and its functionality sarcoplasmic reticulum and its functionality so option is d next next question here you are seeing the four options for a question so in these four options you can see that which of the following options is mismatched with its description so rigor mortis that is dead body rigidity of the muscles that occurs because of uh, death is the right one and hypertrophy hyper means increase in the size of the muscle hypertrophy means increase in the muscle size this is also right atrophy reduction in the size of a individual muscle is called atrophy so muscle fatigue is a condition where the muscle feels restless condition single isolated after prolonged stimulation it is a rapid isolated contractions of the muscle fibers uh, 
is called as so continuous and fast uh, isolated contractions of the muscle fibers which may lead to the production of lactic acid uh, will lead to the muscle fatigue so in when there is a muscle fatigue energy supplied to the muscle is reduced because of continuous contractions or stimulus uh, or the stimulus given uh, gradually decreases then the muscle will show the same contraction as it would have shown in the same strength of uh, stimulus previously so there is a fall in the force of the contraction of a prolonged stimulation and muscle fatigue fatigue it is because of production generally it is because of the production of the lactic acid and la the uh, the energy resource that is the energy currency atp is also lacking in this system so your answer a option a is the mismatched component of the 47 question these three are all right so here option a next what is not true what is not true what is not true not true about muscle contraction so you need to have the thing concern to this what is not true okay here actin and myosin take actomyosin phosphate reserve comes from the phosphocreatinine chemical energy is converted into energy and mechanical energy is converted into chemical energy every time chemical energy is converted into mechanical energy and mechanical energy is never converted it is converted energy is converted into the work but it is not converted once again into the chemical energy so here d option is the wrong option or not true related to the muscle contraction next <coughs> okay muscles which are immune to fatigue are means which are not uh, feel restlessness or generally unstriped muscles they feel restlessness jaw muscles are also under skeletal muscles so all most of the muscles which are concerned with the skeletal system or striated muscles generally have that uh, Uh, uh they need rest but uh, cardiac muscles in spite of uh, they are, these muscles are striated muscles uh, they will be uh, immune to this fatigue or they won't get uh, uh, fatigations and cardiac muscles they take the rest the cardiac muscles will take the rest during the muscle contraction only and they never generally never get fatigued if they get fatigued uh, uh, big, uh, the the person is died and uh, they are also having the large amount of mitochondria so they make themselves not fatigued or they will overcome the fatigue condition next next question next question myoglobin is present in fibers white muscle fibers red muscle fibers both b and c so generally myoglobin so it is mostly present in the red muscles because of presence of more quantity of mitochondria and they are more functional so here red muscle fibers red muscle fibers <coughs> so in this uh, red muscle fibers are uh, consisting of more amount of myoglobin so here based on the sarcoplasmic contents situation of the nuclei and the number of elements formed two types of fibers recognized as striated muscles where fiber uh, white fiber and red fiber 
white fiber have generally less mitochondria but the red my red fiber has to work fast and they have the short duration so they need more amount of mitochondria uh, these myo red muscle fibers are present in the eyeball muscles flight muscles of sparrow and red muscles fibers of slow muscles fiber processing red hemo protein called myoglobin and abundant mitochondria this can perform slow sustained work over long period without getting fatigued generally extensor muscles at the back and flight muscles of the kites will be having this muscles so these are present in the extensor muscles at back position and also these are present in the flight muscles of the kite next light band has which of the following protein obviously light band means actin protein will be present in more so here generally actin and myosin are generally as you know that they are the two contractile proteins present in the myofibrils dark band generally in the dark band of myofibril is composed of more amount of already we have discussed that myosin while the light band is consisting of the actin filament actin filament next coming on to the next one an oxygen that oxygen lacking develops during tetanus sarcoplasmic reticulum anaerobic work and aerobic aerobic means already you know that presence of o2 sarcoplasmic sarcoplasmic release sarcoplasmic release means releasing of calcium plus ions aerobic means in the presence of oxygen tetanus means the muscles remain in the contracted state contracted state but uh, oxygen depth is generally because of the anaerobic work that is uh, in the little presence of oxygen or complete absence of o2 in the body so this will next question 54 question 54 question in the 54 question originally human skeleton consists of 270 bones uh, which are fused to become 206 out of these how many bones are present in the ear ossicles uh, 3 plus 3 that is 6 malus malus incus and stapes 3 and into the second ear 6 so 6 bones are present in the ear only that is malus incus and stapes based on the centrum shape and position vertebra with flat centrum at both ends is called as so here procellus means not having this uh, centrum shape procellus means before having that and amphicellus means two sides two sides heterocellus means many positions acellus means vertebrum with flat centrum at both ends is called as acellus they don't have the knocking bone or connecting bone next one no so in the acellus condition you can see that they will not be having this concavity here will be absent in the acellic condition of the bone next 56 question epiphyseal plate helps in already you know that uh, uh, the uh, thickness of the bone elongation of the bone formation of the bone all of this formation of bone is because of the osteocytes osteocytes and thickness of the bone because of calcium accumulation and epiphyseal plate present in the bones at the jointal region generally meant for elongation of the epiphyseal bone is generally meant for 
elongation of the bone and increasing the size of the organism size of the organism next coming generally you know that human uh, human head consists of how many bones so already you know that cranium i mean human skull human skull consists of 29 bones that is 28 plus 1 that is uh, one is lower jaw and this 28 in the are skull bones 8 are cranial bones 6 are ear bones 14 plus 8 uh, 22 22 plus 6 28 plus 1 29 bones so your skull bones are eight answer for this question is eight so is eight is epiphyseal bone consist of eight uh, sorry cranial bones 57 consist of eight bones that is uh, <clears throat> that eight bones are two parietal bones two front temporal lobe bones one as two pe that is 2 plus 2 4 plus 1 plus one spinoid bone that is 2 2 temporal bones 2 spin uh 2 <coughs> parietal bones and spinoidal bone plus one frontal bone plus one ethmoid bone plus one occipital bone so these are the eight bones two temporal two occipital one spinoid one ethmoid one uh, occip uh, one frontal and one it uh, spinoid so all together eight bones answer for this question is eight bones eight yeah. bones so we have discussed about the cranium we have discussed related to the cranium next so you are they are you can see a diagrammatic representation here you can see a diagrammatic representation uh, this diagrammatic representation is of a human um, human hindling and so you, here the labelings were done what are the two wrongly labeled components here so you know that the upper part thigh bone is also called as femur fibula tibia and the metatarsals tarsals and phalangeals phalangeals are the 14 uh, limbs present to the fingers so phalangeals is wrongly matched and tibia fibia so the this bone you are seeing this bone is called fibula this is called tibia femur tibia fibia but is wrongly matched and also you can see that uh, the phalangeals phalangeals should be this one so the phalangeals are shown matched and fibula is given this is actually tibia so this is called fibula so here the option c option c that is c option c option is wrongly matched in the human in limb next coming on to the next coming on to the next question matrix of ca cartilage is slightly pliable due to pliable means blendable due to so acetic salt keratin sulfate chondroitin salts chondrites and calcium salts 
So acetic salt uh, is produced by osteocytes. Keratin sulfate is a component of our system. Calcium salts, and generally the answer for this question is chondroitin salts. So this is present in the cartilage. They are generally going to provide the resistance to the compression, thus making it slightly bendable, pliable means bendable as the property it makes. Because of this bendable property, it will make it flexible. It is generally flexible in nature. Next, lower jaw of man is made up of, already we have discussed that it is made up of only one bone that is 28 plus 1 29 so it is only one bone next coming on to the 61st question 60 61st question which of the following which of the following which of the following is a sismoid bone here petrigoid bone but Spinoid and palatin. So you know that palatin is present in the oral cavity. Petrino, petri, petrigo, per, perigoid bone is present in the and pre-spinoid in the skull region. Patella is the uh, portion present which is not formed in the Generally, patella is a generally a sismoid bone. This is present in the knee joint, knee cups. Or these are also called as knee cups or knee joints, and these are found by the ossification of tendon muscle. Tendon is a, uh, a type of uh, um, connective bo connective tissue which is connecting the bone to the muscle, where tendon moves over the bony surface. So tendon. Patella is a kneecap, kneecap which is generally a sismoid bone and it is really formed by the ossification or main uh, connection of sismoid bone. So here the patella is formed because of the Patella is formed because of ossification. Ossification. Next. Vertebral canal is found in lumbar vertebra, caudal vertebra, thoracic vertebra, and cervical vertebra. Vertebral canal is found in lumbar means just below the rib cage on the back side. Caudal vertebra means sacrum and coccyx cervical vertebra means uh, between the hair skull and the uh, thoracic vertebra so probably here the fluid flows vertebral canal can be found in this that is between the seven bones of the neck region and thoracic vertebra means from the shoulder region to the uh, ribs just below above, uh, above the abdominal region so here the answer for the vertebral canal it can be found in the case of the cervical 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 vertebrae c option next Lumbar vertebrae are found in lumbar vertebrae is just below the abdominal region and just above the pelvic region. So it is the generally called as a abdominal region as we have discussed earlier. As we have discussed earlier. Next, coming on to the 64 question. 64 question in the 64 question. So here zygomatic bone is part of a cranium, part of a facial bone and forms upper jaw, part of a facial bone and it helps in the formation of eye socket, part of a facial bone and it forms the movable joint. So here zygomatic bone is present in the skull that 14, in one of the 14 bones the zygomatic
manhood and it helps in the formation of the eye socket and along with the spinoid and ethmoid bones so here option c is the answer for the zygomatic bone next coming on to the next one the vertebral column is connected to the pelvic girdle in the vertebral column is connected to the pelvic girdle with the sacral region or the lumbar region so answer for this is sacral region sacral and that is sacrum and coccyx next coming on to the 66th question which of the following bone in mammals does not articulate with any other bone or move so iard bone is present in this region iard bone is present in this region or this is also called as a tongue bone and is a single bone that is laid in the upper part of the throat region just above the laryngeal region it serves as a it serves as a point of attachment for the some of the muscles of the tongue and floor of the mouth but does not articulate with the so it does not connect with the other bones so and next one so answer for this is hyoid answer for this is hyoid bone hyoid bone b option next appendicular skeleton appendicular means supporting skeleton so it is generally uh, shoulders and hind limbs to attach to the pelvic girdle and pectoral girdle so here the answer for this appendicular skeleton append appendicular skeleton is girdle and their limbs next number of already we have discussed that cervical vertebra means seven eight so your seven bones some say that eight some place has that seven but seven is the seven plus one you need to call that is the cervical vertebra number of pores pairs of floating ribs in the man are generally seven plus two seven plus three ten ten plus two so here uh, floating ribs are uh, mean the the for true ribs false ribs and floating ribs floating ribs are 11 and 12 so answer for this is answer for this question is to that is 11th and 12th ribs are called as floating ribs next each vertebra has a central halo portion through which spinal cord passes the allo portion of vertebra is called as each vertebra has a central halo portion through which spinal cord passes this vertebra is called as neural canal neural canal foramen magnum is present in the brain and central canal and foramen ovale is also a part of a brain and central canal is present in the uh, uh, mean central canal is present which is connecting the different lobes of the brain so your answer for this is neural canal option so with this we'll stop for the day and uh, you can do the remaining questions